Better? Okay. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Again. <laughs> anyway, uh, you will learn to appreciate that um, the, um, you, uh, the this this question here. You set up a user. Do you want to disable this as HD root logins? And of course, it defaults to yes. Um, and we're all good. And well, there's a magic trick here that I actually managed to figure out that we're in Europe and Sofia. Next up, uh, finds you whatever your root disk is. Uh, if you have several disks, it will find them. Uh, you may have to muck around with uh, uh, F disk at some point if you have several disks to start with. This is a very simple one. Um, one uh, tip here, you could, you can choose here whether you want disk UIDs, which, which are fairly, fairly long strings, uh, unique identifiers for your disks, which also becomes part of the partition name for your, uh, your FS tab. You want this, but you can choose no here and, uh, and uh, go with the old fashioned WD0A and so forth. Um, which, of course, uh, risks that when, whenever you put another disk in, well, the numbering might change, and you don't want that. You really, really want the, the UIDs. Um, next question here is, well, where it gets scary, at least where if you're uh, multi-booting, do you use the whole disk or edit the MBR? Uh, you could edit the MBR. This drops you into the F disk. Um, this is the only disk in this virtual machine, so we'll skip the M MBR editing. But, oh well, well, let's have a look. It looks like this. Uh, what we could do here, um, basically we have uh, four partitions, and uh, you, uh, if this was not your boot disk, you would want to zero out uh, the, the three, uh, three non-zero ones. Uh, but we do not want this, and we use the whole disk, and it comes up with a default partitioning scheme. Now, uh, if you notice the mount points, you have a small root, root partition, you have something like temp where you will not, um, where the uh, mount options will include uh, uh, no execute, no device, and uh, so forth. And uh, it tries to make a sensible choice for how much space you actually want to use, and uh, fairly well, actually fairly minimal amounts of space, um, and whatever is left over after the uh, after reasonable uh, uh, amount of space for your, uh, for your system uh, is uh, automatically suggested to, to to go to your home partition, which which is of course where your home. Um, um, uh, your home directories will be uh, created. You can play with this. You can go, go ahead and edit. Um, but then again, just to demonstrate that we can, a an OpenBSD install is almost all pressing enter. We just go for the automatic layout. And now it creates the file systems. And we go to, finally, we're starting real install with the, with the sets. Now, um, here, you could, if you have, have your sets in a different location, you can, uh, you can even install off the, a local hard disk. Um, well, on a new install, that probably isn't an option, but for upgrading, uh, whenever I, I, I myself tend to go snap, snapshot to snapshot, and I just download the sets, boot off the BCRD, uh, install from local disk and it just works. We, we can uh, walk through that uh, later. But here we, here we go from the CD set. Um, that's the default for uh, the uh, path on the CD. And uh, this is where we, um, it makes a, an intelligent choice here that to, well, since the default QMU uh, virtual machine is not a multiprocessor machine, it does not want to 
to, in, uh, to install the BSDMP, which is the multi-processor kernel. Um, the rest of the sets, um, uh, rest of the sets at once. Um, you will notice, well, this is actually slightly past 5.6, but you will notice that there is no ETS sets here. Uh, there's only X sets. Um, we'll get back to that. But anyway, we go install. Um, yes, you will perhaps have this uh, problem. The directory does not contain, contain the signature. Continue with that verification. On a new install, hopefully you've um, you verified your, your sets anyway. So we can just go ahead and install. Oh, this will take a couple of minutes. <laughs> Um, QMU, unfortunately, is not a high-performance uh, uh, solution. There was some talk about uh, OpenBSD and Beehive. Uh, I don't know if anybody, I don't think anybody's working on that at the moment, but yeah. Hmm. Anyway, from here on, you know, it's uh, <coughs> the uh, installing OpenBSD, you, know, you can safely go over the, the defaults, basically uh, enter, enter, enter through your uh, through your in install, um, after this, you will need to type reboot, uh, and you'll be booting into the, uh, to the new system. Uh, we can take a peek around. Um, yes. Yeah. USB flash? Uh, well, I've, well, I've. Like an internal USB port. Mm. Think about possibility to migrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Um, well, again, as long as uh, the whatever you put on your uh, your flash drive is has been verified, you know. <laughs> I guess the config is not a problem. Mm. Mm. So. Uh, if you have a copy. Mm. Replace it. Yes, uh, no problem. Please. So. Okay. Um, you could, uh, in that case, you could probably do a an auto. It sounds like an environment that's really ripe for an auto install. You know, just have your response file ready, and uh, you know, <coughs> which we could uh, we could take a, take a peek at that. And while while this uh, completes, um, that's in the other presentation. Um, we can. Hang on. Well, for the um, uh, for the auto install, uh, you have something like uh, what we would do is uh, put up a uh, in your dhcpd.conf on the uh, well, assuming you already have a, uh, a working OpenBC uh, or a working uh, ser um, server here. Um, basically, this is what you put in here. Of course, the the Ethernet uh, address of the thing, the uh, the IP address is supposed to have. A file name is if it's auto install, it will do the install um, sequence. Um, 
if it's um, auto upgrade, it will do an upgrade on the um, uh, on the existing system. And you would have this response file like something, okay, your system host name, your password, uh, which is the encrypted version of the, of the password. Um, and well, basically your questions and the matching answers. Um, and um, I think we can actually run that demo here. Uh, you know, our, our regular install has almost uh, finished. Um, but we can... Uh, Yes, yeah, so this, this is what a an, an uninstall uh, looks like. Uh, this is a, this is an, an MP4, uh, so it's uh, actually this is actually cheating. Uh, this is uh, m there m there might be some uh, some small differences. Um, basically, this is the boot, uh, and uh, pretty soon you will see. The automatic, okay, here's, it waits for a few seconds for whether you you choose to, yeah, so I think the timeout is, yeah, time is five seconds for, uh, and it just uh, retrieves the, the information and it goes through all the uh, partitioning and so forth in really, uh, really high tempo here. And uh, we have here, here in contrast to what we had earlier, this one has the, uh, the signature file, and actually it starts by verifying the sets. For the, uh, and the first first step is ver verification. The next step is uh, installation. Um, <coughs> yeah, he managed to uh, put put that in. It's uh, also. Uh, Part of it is probably because the disk was fairly small, so uh, there, there's a there's a limit here. I, I forget which what the limit is, but if it, if the uh, if the disk is really small, it won't offer that uh, 11 partitions. Uh, it will just okay, go root swap whatever. <laughs> so, but um, so. Uh, Well, I think um, you should be able to. Uh, well, um, I think you probably should be able to uh, specify. Uh, I forget the details, sorry, but uh, yeah, you should be able to specify a, uh, did we stop something? No, okay, it's just, it takes a little time. And of course, well, this, this went by the default, um, default choice of uh, sets. So we get even the, the games, like stuff like Beastie Tetris. <laughs> And this will conclude as, uh, yeah, well, this is almost done anyway. It will, much like the one in the background here, will, yes. Um, what this will do is, uh, now that we say we, it saves the con configuration files, 
And as we notice in the background here, this one is, is also, it also boots into the, the, the newly installed system. So, and basically, if you have a number of, uh, number of systems you want to uh, install automatically, this is, this is the way you, you do it. Um, Now, if we return to yes, um, this is for the manual install, well, it's, this is where it uh, where it stops, um, uh, where you actually need to enter reboot, and um, we will have a version 5.6 system. Um, Yeah, and the auto install is apparently on repeat in the background. So we're I think we'll just kill that. Now this is what a regular boot look like, looks like. Um, Yeah, and you will notice things like PF is enabled. Uh, PF, PF is actually enabled before the network, uh, network is configured. Um, which is one thing that, well, oh, oh, uh, FreeBC users will perhaps find a little strange, but uh, what happens is when PF is enabled at this early stage, it also loads a default rule set that will be in place in case you've fucked up your, your real pf.conf so you can log in and fix things. <laughs> so, and yeah, well, you can see the, um, here it well, generates the uh, op uh, host keys. This is the first boot, so. Uh, Yeah, actually, a current about a day after it was cut, but I, I, I overslept that day or something. <laughs> uh, the, the binary is still uh, is called the same, um, uh, but it's in five uh, five six. It is Libra SSL, but you know the the file the file names didn't change. So, um, Now, um, back when I started using OpenBSD, I was um, uh, I was really impressed by you know, how um, how tight the system was. Like little ads, with I, and everything had a man page and so forth. What happens in uh, in OpenBSD 5.6 is that ads is actually a lot smaller. Uh, what uh, what happened is that a lot of the the config files that used to be here for non-default services uh, were simply moved to uh, its examples. So if you happen to, right, let's have a look at uh, examples. Uh, if, you, if you don't run BGP, you don't, you don't want bgp.conf anyway, but you have an example here. Uh, please, we can start by copying that back and editing and so forth, or you can just read this docu documentation. Um, so basically, your system got a lot less messy, well, even less messy in, uh, in OpenBSD 5.6 compared to earlier. Now, on a uh, on an upgrade, you might see a lot of uh, things lying around anyway, but uh, now at least you know you can uh, remove them, stuff you don't. Uh, and uh, I suspect when the actual release happens, there will be uh, documentation on the web on uh, exactly which files to, to remove. 
you're um, uh, going for a pristine uh, system. Now, um, this is, that's for a um, clean install. If we're interested, we could go for uh, an up upgrade from some earlier version. Or, well, or I could start listening to your questions. Um, the, uh, again, the formula of the session is, um, yeah, this is our insert demo here. Yes, one thing I did not uh, mention is that the installer, it used to be that network installs could be either the FTP or HTTP. Uh, for various reasons, we are dropping it. HTTP works just as well, and uh, um, we do have a very nice FTP proxy for PF firewalls, but you can't really rely on that being in place. So H HTTP generally works, and if you're running a mirror, well, this one less thing you need to worry about. So let's uh, f starting with five uh, five six. We only have uh, actually that was five five. Um, so, for anyone coming from the Linux world, um, OpenBSD, well, basically, the, there are not a lot of, well, there are fewer knobs to, to, uh, to twiddle in OpenBSD than in several other operating systems. Uh, once you do twiddle, you put in your rc.conf.local because rc.conf is, uh, um, is the defaults file. So, if you look at the pristine system here, Is that conf local? It's well, all of twelve bytes. Um, man, this is slow. And it says well, basically, it says we enabled NTPD, and it has no flags. It just runs by the default. Um, you would. Um, RCConf. RCConf, as I said, on OpenBSD is the defaults, much like FreeBSD's as defaults, RC.conf. Same thing, only we, we our convention is that you, well, uh, well, it's, uh, that ammunition did not used to be that, uh, uh, that strict, but, well, I, people have been known to edit this, and this is it's a really bad idea, because this file will be overwritten next time you upgrade. It comes out of the, uh, the base sets. Uh, or it used to be the ad sets. So um, this is the format, and uh, this is now a really simple file either. There are basically th um, three things you can do for each setting. Uh, you can disable, disable stuff with uh, no. Anything that is not no, e including, well, if it's, if it's empty, it's enable, enable a daemon, but run with whatever defaults, or alternatively, you can put a uh, set of flags and quotes here. So much the same as on the FreeBSD, but you cannot put commands or scripts here. <laughs> uh, that would be for your rc.conf.local, for example. No, rc, rc local. rc.conf local is basically just an extension of, um, uh, or actually overrides uh, rc.conf. Um, and again, uh, one thing we do not put in the, you know, in contrast with, with FreeBSD, we do not put the uh, network interface uh, configuration in, uh, in rc.conf. It actually goes in hostname. Uh, not interface name files, much like you know, traditional Solaris and a few others. Um, and of course, well, anything you put in your ads directory or subdirectories as you want them. Um, config files for various, various demons. And uh, really important here, on OpenBSD, everything has a man page. Everything has a man page and usually, usually has readable. Uh, so uh, if you were a little braver, you would just dive into the man pages and skip my tutorial. <laughs> but anyway, um, so basically uh, something, uh, yeah, one thing that's good to know is we have a specific uh, setting uh, package 
scripts. Um, packages are uh, anything installed by the package system or are daemons known uh, installed by, by the package system generally are started via some script in that's rc.d named the same as daemon. So, and the ones you want to start uh, automatically on, on boot, you put in the package scripts uh, variable. And here is for a mail server I am running. It starts XM because I do not like send mail and uh, open SMTPD wasn't quite ready yet. <laughs> uh, Spam Assassin, ClamD, Fresh Clam, and Grayscanner. Grayscanner is a program that runs in tandem with uh, OpenBC SpamD. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you haven't sampled SpamD yet, well, and you're running in the mail server, you're really missing out. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, for your local, uh, you, you can actually, rc.local exists uh, if you have stuff that doesn't fit in the, uh, in the, more, in the more modern uh, version of how to do things. Um, um, yes, uh, things that are good to know is that the, in the base demons are generally privilege separated, so, and some of them in Chirut, uh, so that, um, uh, well, uh, the practical upshot of this is that your, uh, it's password and it's uh, groups, uh, this group file on a typical OpenBSD system is uh, uh, a little, little more crowded than uh, uh, you, s you have these. Uh, basically, everything runs as its own, as its own user uh, with a specific set of permissions and usually a home directory that's not really usable. And most of them will not have a, uh, well, most of them will have um, uh, a uh, non-interactive shell as well. So, um, yeah, that's, that's me at the bottom there. Um, which is, you know, bending the traditional Unix, uh, Unix permissions uh, system to do your well, even, uh, even without the, uh, what do I call it, role-based, uh, well, this is uh, this is as close to role-based uh, access control as you get using using Unix permissions. So, um, and well, one thing that's important to remember is that well, well, one thing that always trips up Linux users coming to OpenBSD that bin bin sh is not bash. On OpenBSD, it's uh, uh, the uh, public domain born shell. And um, the one thing that will get you roundly ridiculed uh, in open OpenBSD in MISC is changing root shell to bash. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, because, well, are some, well, system scripts have not been extensively tested using bash. So, well, well it's it's likely that things will break. Um, and of course, for your basic environment, you want an editor. Uh, if you want X, there is one. We have the real VI and we have MG, which is a strange animal. That's a dynamic Emacs clone that's actually just an editor. <laughs> um, I, yeah, and anyone who grew up with Emacs will be quite happy with MG. But, you know, it's just an editor, not that not that big monster. Um, but uh, GNU Emacs is available through the package system if you want that. If you want to read, read email with your edit, text editor, you can. So, yes? Yes, uh, or, or our locality support is. Yeah. Yes, unfortunately, unfortunately, locality support is um, has been a mostly stopped work in progress for quite a while. Uh, but then again, once you're an X, that's it's generally uh, 
uh, generally better, better taken care of. So, um, but yes, uh, on the um, even uh, Norwegians like like myself, we do not. Uh, this is supposed to be an O slash, and this is uh, A E. Actually, the A E lig ligature uh, actually becomes A E on, on the shell here. So that that, that is a remaining problem. Uh, so basically, um, UTF eight is not told in yet. It's. Uh, it's been a, as I said, a work in progress for quite a while. It's possible that work has stopped and uh, might be restarted if somebody steps up. It's um, thing is with uh, look at, um, uh, Unicode support. It it's a fairly large uh, set of code that needs to be uh, verified to actually work. So it's a lot of work involved. <laughs> so. And uh, polluting the, uh, well, it, it has been referred to as polluting the, the, the base system. So, <laughs> well, what, it, was a question over here? Or? Oh, no. Okay. Now, once you've um, uh, once you've uns uh, installed your 5.6 uh, release, well, uh, there is already a patch. For OpenBSD 5.6, yes, one reliability uh, fix for several popular network adapters. Uh, this one, well, the the recommended way to do to go is really <coughs> what I tend to do uh, when I, when I want to run uh, stable systems is maintain a stable checkout of the. Let's check out this, of the stable source tree. What is basically uh, uh, pick the the mirror nearest to you, uh, network wise. Uh, you'll you'll find a find a list of mirrors via this uh, via the Anon CVS uh, uh, page on, on openbeast.org. Uh, for, uh, for, mo uh, for most people in Europe, the EU, uh, the EU mirror will work. This one says CA because, well, the previous presentation was given in Canada. Um, and a good thing here is that if you check out a, uh, the, uh, the, sta uh, the, uh, the stable uh, tree, um, you probably will notice that the same files that are referenced in the in the patch file in the errata will uh, will uh, will be marked as changed when you do the checkout. But you can what you, we should do anyway is uh, when when there is a an errata out, uh, fetch the file anyway, or just l at least look at it, and you can go from this. This is basically a diff, and it's also got the. Um, now it looks like the signature here is a separate file, but anyway, you go by the uh, whatever it says on top of the uh, um, top of the uh, of the patch. So here's uh, apply the the patch, uh, and you actually apply the patch by uh, running a signify command that. Uh, Verifies that the patch is a real one, and then runs uh, runs patch. Uh, and uh, using the, uh, using the actual patch here, you can fairly easily eyeball whether the uh, whether the relevant files have been changed. Um, and again, go and build your kernel. Um, and, uh, and then again, if you maintain a lot of systems, uh, you might want to. Um, Actually, build local releases. It's a little more involved, but the uh, release, uh, the man release page is actually quite complete. Uh, another thing, if you want to, um, uh, if you want um, more literature on the uh, uh, current feeding of OpenBSD, um, Michael Lucas's uh, Absolute OpenBSD Second Edition is a really good book about OpenBSD. It's now a couple of versions old, uh, so it doesn't, he doesn't have Signify, for example, and the, uh, 
uh, the PF part is missing the new uh, queuing system, but you know the, the book is really worth uh, uh, worth getting. Um, are we? Uh, are they setting up coffee out there? They should be already. Yes. Okay. So maybe we should break for coffee, and um, I'll promise I'll turn on the microphone afterwards. <laughs>